Does our media need one big overarching regulator? A new proposal says yes, it does. For the first time, the government would attempt to regulate social media platforms like Meta and YouTube, but it would also apply to mainstream media outlets. So is this online safety or censorship? Well, joining me now is Shane Curry, editor at Larger NZME, who writes the Media Insider column. Welcome. And Anna Rafferty Connell, the spin-off's head of audience and former social media consultant. Anna Cordova. Um, let's start with the social media side. Anna, when it comes to social media regulation, what's wrong with the situation right now? Well, we don't have any regulation is what's wrong with so the situation a a problem, yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we are nearly two decades into social media and um, we've sort of gotten to the point where many people would say big tech is almost too big to regulate now. Mm. And so what is happening here and what is happening in other countries across the world is that there are now some attempts for nation states essentially to assert you know, some kind of sovereignty and make some rules around so, so do you have any understanding of, of what would happen if I, as a viewer, encounter something that I think is harmful? How would this new framework prevent that or address that? So I think it's important to dispel the idea that you, if you saw something you didn't like or you thought was harmful, that you would report it somehow and it would go to this new super regulator. Essentially what this proposal is saying is across all of the different industries, including social media, you come back with a code of practice, you alter your terms of service, you put some things in place that users mm. can use and in instances where you are not adhering to the code of practice, that is when this new regulator would get involved. Okay, so but this new regulator, Shane, regulator, Shane, is going to take into account TV, print, digital, and they already have regulatory process. Does that? What does that mean for sort of the so-called mainstream media? Yes, we do, but it's a little complicated at the moment. It's a little messy. There's lots of different bodies. So, for instance, the Herald and other um, mainstream digital publications um, work up to the Media Council, whereas News Hub Nation and and you know other broadcasters are under the auspices of the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Yeah. So that that needs to be tidied up. What the government is saying, or internal affairs in this document, yeah. is that then over and above um, those regulators or um, industry bodies becomes the superpower, and that can set the codes. If it's not happy with what the Media Council and Broadcasting right. Standards Authority is doing, this superpower could come in, change the codes, or at least work with industry on, on strengthening so them. Is, so is the industry happy with this? I, I see that stuff Sinead Boucher says that it goes too far. What is the possible overreach that she's talking about? Yes, I, I, I mean managed to speak to most of the CEOs or the, or the different businesses and it's fair to say uh, the reaction's um, very cautious through to concern, deep concern right, around, concerned about? well concerned that, uh, about the impact on I guess the freedom of the press, um, it's important that media, uh, you know that there's nothing preemptive or um, prescriptive in this new superpower that they can sort of dictate where the media is going. Now that in, internal affairs itself has said look we're not we're not setting up the superpower to kind, to kind of um, dictate it does, where it says, media Yeah, it says it doesn't have any, ed, any editorial control, this superpower, this, this new regulator, where, does it? No, but where the concern uh, may come in is, is around the principles themselves and, and what defines harm. So, and this is where okay. the hate speech, hate speech laws came into um, So, into so yeah, problems. that is a really good point. How, Anna, would we define a harm or are we just going to go down that sort of whole hate speech debate again? Well, I think that's probably one of the biggest issues that this proposal raises. So they've said that they're not planning on changing the definition of what is legal and illegal and that those kinds of things will still be deal dealt with by bodies like the censor or the police. And so when we're talking, what examples are we talking about in terms of illegal and illegal? Well, you would talk about something like um, inciting violence, for example, in, in the instance of kind of extreme um, content. Right, yeah. um, the harm stuff, the example that they give is they talk about disordered eating, for example, yeah. and people coming across content um, which, you know, might promote unhealthy kind of body image or disordered eating. The, the issue around that is that the spectrum of that is quite wide, right? Like mm. you could start with um, how to make a bunch of healthy salads and because of the way the algorithms work, and I think... You know, the proposal speaks to some algorithm transparency, but it's pretty 
um, unclear as to how that might work, um, you can end up very quickly in some pretty nasty content around very disordered eating. And so working with that spectrum and trying to figure out exactly what the threshold for harm is is going to be one of the biggest yeah, challenges. Yeah, Shane, do you, do you see issues there as well in terms of identification, definition of harm, and, and people are saying, well, you're just curtailing my freedom of Absolutely, expression. absolutely. Any code needs to be objective. You know, if the regulator does come in, we need, and the industry needs to know what code specifically that we're working to, and that works right now for us. I think one of the biggest issues for us is, you know, we are heavily regulated as, a, as the mainstream media, if you like, or the mm. traditional media platforms, but as Anna says, social media, since the laws have come in, social media's been here now for a, a good two decades, they just haven't got around the table. Ooh. We've seen cases and instances, Christchurch terror attack, yep. where this horrific content was being posted online with no rules or regulations. It's expensive to produce content as journalists. It's expensive to run newsrooms, yet the social media platforms uh, Well, let's just talk about the social media the platforms, all right? So we've got these big tech companies overseas, and if we set up a, a New Zealand regulator, is is uh, is a Meta, is a Facebook, is um, a TikTok going to pay any attention to these regulations? Well, they, I, I did get brief comment from Meta this week in which they say, you know, we're already working to a voluntary code that they introduced last year with uh, industry participants. But I do think that there's a lot more work to be done with them. I, uh, and, you know, that will take investment from them. And we've seen just in the last six months just where Meta is heading in terms of its content and its algorithms. Mm. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of other issues on the table with Meta and Google at the moment with the New Zealand government. What, what, do, what do you think about uh, whether these big platforms are going to take any notice at all, Anna? I mean, I think we have some precedent in terms of what's happened overseas. So Australia right. introduced um, their Online Safety Act in 2021. They are, and I think this is probably a good indication of how long this kind of thing might take, they are still working through that process. But where they've gotten to is the social, those social media companies have contributed to the development of codes of practice, right? So, mm. so there is precedent for these companies coming to the table. I mean, I think their preference is to be involved in this process in terms of developing these codes of practice, and that kind of raises some questions as well. Yeah. But... It will take time, I think, and you know you're going to have people who think that um, what is being suggested is too restrictive, and you're going to have people who think it's what too do you, soft. What I mean, what do you think is the answer? As somebody who's been in the in the area for a couple of decades, I mean, I think this is a really good start, and it's a really good step. I think. The, you know, the difference here is we do absolutely nothing and we just say, too big, can't do it, too kind hard. of yeah. roll over and die, mm. or we assert or, you know, some kind of sovereignty and make some attempts to um, put some, some rules in place. I, I think it, combining all of the regulatory stuff, I think creating that level playing field, I think you know, Shane's right in terms of the fact that media have always been very well regulated and social media has not so we should all. bring it together. So yeah. Shane, I mean, what, do you, what is your ideal, having been you know, an editor of a large organisation? Yes, well, I th absolutely, and I think any piece of content that we put up online, you know, it goes through at least two or three sets of eyes, whereas social media, frankly, has been a bit of a wild west over the last two decades, and mm. that's caused lots of issues. Yeah. So I think the solution for me lies in its great start, and I agree with Anna on, on this discussion document. Uh, it's going to take, I think, many years to get to the right. point where we need to be. I think we need to tidy up some of the po possibly just the industry bodies, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, that is confusing for the consumer, isn't it? Well, mm. I, I disagree with that. I know okay. the, the dis discussion document said that. I think, if, you know, we're pretty clear at the Herald and uh, stuff I and others are clear as well, just where you can complain to in terms mm. of the Media Council and how to do it. Uh, and that's important. The Media Council has got a majority public membership. It's not run by the industry. Yeah. Uh, it's got an independent chair. It's uh, it's a really effective um, self-regulatory uh, body. Right, right. OK. Do, are you saying to me that you don't think there actually needs to be brought in to this I think, overarching I think regulator? certainly there can be some tidy-ups in that uh, area, but okay. I don't think any more regulation needs to be put on traditional what media. About, what about if, I mean, there, there are there are comebacks for mainstream media organisations if uh, if they decide something was okay and then the person that laid the complaint you know can go higher. Mm. But with social media companies, there isn't that. So, what is in this proposal that is going to say to a social media company, we're going to fine you, or we're going to do something to you, we're going to take away your access to New Zealand? Is there anything like that? So they haven't. They haven't gone so far as to kind of outline exactly what would happen. They have mentioned fines and they are, you know, within the proposal of questions around what do you think that 
should kind of look like. I think the key change for social media companies is that there will be now specific terms of service for users in New Zealand of social media platforms. That is what they're asking the social media companies to do. So your experience of social media in New Zealand mm. may well differ you know, to the experience of people who live in other countries. And again, that is something that the EU is looking at, that Australia is looking at, and that Canada is looking at. So it's not unprecedented. But, but what it does is it shifts the burden onto those companies to adhere now to to laws or, or right. regulations okay. specifically set by a country. Uh, and just finally, Shane, is it because mainstream media uses social media a lot to promote its product and disseminate its product, is there a chance that, you know, the, 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 what's going to happen to the social media companies if they get targeted in a way is going to affect the business of the mainstream media companies? Well, that's a whole different discussion, really. <laughs> and there's been a big, long, uh, obviously, um, debate around just uh, what Facebook, uh, especially, and Meta, uh, Meta and Google, yep. should be funding the news media companies and, and shortly we'll see the government introduce legislation right. uh, along those lines which does level up the playing field and it means that the um, social media companies are paying the fair share. They do use our content um, mm. to help their own business models yes. a lot. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. But in terms of uh, protecting people from digital harm, we'll see what happens with this discussion. Shane Curry from NZME and Anna Rafferty-Connell from The Spinoff, thank you so much for your time today.